Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again. It's Allison with the Everyday Scrapbooker and I wanted to share with you another mixed media layout today. I will be creating it using plastic packaging, just stuff that would end up in the garbage I decided to hang on to and I'll be creating a watercolor background using that. So the things you're going to need is plastic wrap and a couple of reinkers, any colors will do. To start, I dropped a couple drops of reinker onto my craft mat and then placed the plastic wrap into that and then put it onto the paper. It's really simple, probably a little too simple, but the finished effect looks absolutely amazing. The colors I am using is close from close to my heart. It's Glacier, Reinker, and also Mink. So it's blue and gray as the colors that I'm working with today. You'll notice that I'm adding a little bit of water from my spray bottle to the ink on my craft mat. And then again on my white cardstock. That's not necessary. I do it just to lighten the color a little bit. And then I work towards darker colors. So I add less and less water as I go because I like to add layers. But that's not necessary. You can just dip your plastic wrap right into the ink and you don't have to add water at all. It's totally up to you. Before I started my water coloring, I also applied gesso to my white cardstock just to prep it so that I could seal it and then add watercolor to it later on after it was dried so that the ink doesn't soak through the paper. I've also gotten into the habit of taping my paper to my work surface only because I like to use my heat tool to help speed up the drying process and my paper curls when heat is applied to it and to help sort of alleviate that um, I found that taping the paper to my desk works. I like using washi tape because it's removable and doesn't ruin the paper at all or very much. Sometimes when I remove the washi tape a little bit of paper comes with it especially I find pattern papers. I try to be as careful as I can but sometimes that's just not enough so I work with it. There's not really anything that you can do once the paper is a little bit torn and I like to think that it adds just a little bit more character. Always trying to look on the bright side. So now you can see I'm adding less water uh, than I was earlier because I'm trying to deepen and darken the colors just a little bit and I also for reference like to place my pattern papers if there's going to be any or the picture over the watercolor area just for reference just to see how much of it peeks out from under the photo or the paper or whatever it is I'll be applying on top of it because I want to make sure that some of it is still visible I don't want it all covered up because you do all that work and then cover it up it doesn't seem worth it to me. So I often go back and forth placing things back on top and if I feel like any more needs to be added I'll add a little bit more and if not if I'm happy with the way it looks then I move on to other things kind of like right now. So right now I'm going to be adding the pattern paper. I followed a sketch to create this layout. It's a sketch that I found on Pinterest and I have decided to host a sketch challenge on my Facebook page. If you are not currently a follower on my Facebook page, I definitely invite you to join us and play along. The sketch challenge will be all month long, so you're not going to miss out. It's the pinned post at the very top of the page, so if you do drop by to check it out, that's where you're going to find it. I'll include the link to my Facebook page in the description box below so that you are able to hop on over there. I'm adding a little bit more reinker now. I'm using Close to My Heart Black Reinker and I'm adding a little bit of splatter around the page and it ends up framing the photo that I put on later on really, really nicely. It hits three of the four corners of the picture and looks pretty great. Later on, I actually decide to Oh, I did it already. I also used a close to my heart shimmer brush and squeezed some of the ink out and added some larger drops of ink to the page as well. I took my heat gun to this as well 
to help speed up the drying process. But I found later on that it must not have been totally dry because I end up getting some smudges onto the picture. Ugh, wasn't too happy about that, but what can you do? That's one of the hazards of crafting, I guess. I just layered my picture. It's a four by six inch photo onto some scrap uh, stencil paper. I'm using it in replacement of vellum because I don't have any vellum on hand at the moment and stencil sheets, stencil paper looks pretty much the same. So I'm using that instead. And then I'm layering all of that on top of white cardstock. All of the cardstock and pattern papers that I'm using today are also from Close to My Heart and you'll find them listed down below in the dis description box as well. If there's anything that catches your eye and you really like, you may be able to find it still in my Close to My Heart shop. Um, but if not, it's there just for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Okay, so I'm placing the picture down, just making sure it's straight. I added it, I adhered it to the layout with some foam squares because I'm planning on later on, planning to add uh, sewing thread, that's a little bit better, to the layout a little bit later on. But right now I'm just trying to figure out title placement. I cut the title with my Cricut. It's one of the files that, um, I think I've had for a long time. Anyways, it's from my Cricut. I cut it from Mink cardstock. And I've decided, because I wanted to add sewing thread, to layer my title over top of it. And I think it looks really cool in the end. I wanted to add the title, adhere it with some foam squares as well, but I don't have anything thin enough so I just ended up gluing it directly to the layout base. I really wish that I had something thin enough to apply to the title to pop it up just a little bit because I think having some depth between the thread and the title would have looked even cooler. But I'm happy with the finished result anyways. It still looks pretty neat having those two things layered on top of each other. I'm using my liquid glass to adhere the title right now. I'll get the other portion of that popped on here right away too and then I'll be moving on to adding some embellishing. Cleaning up all the ink off of your craft mat is super duper easy. I typically like to use baby wipes to wipe it up uh, especially if it dries a little bit. Um, baby wipes are perfect for cleaning up the crafty messes that you make while you are crafting but I've also found just good old-fashioned Kleenex works really well too especially if it's fresh and hasn't dried yet um, even a little spritz of water from your water bottle and paper towel or Kleenex or even an old rag will work just as well to clean up your ink from your work surface so I'm just adding a little more uh, sewing thread right now. I cut a few more hearts from my Cricut to embellish uh, this layout to complete embellishing it I should say. Um, and I stuck with red. I chose to use red in this layout because it's first of all a color that I don't often use in my crafting unless it's like for Christmas. And I thought it would be really neat to use something that I don't typically use. It also helped that the red was in my girlfriend's shirt and as soon as I looked at this picture I knew right away that I was going to use red in one way, shape, or form. I didn't mention earlier but in the red piece at the top of the page um, I actually threw that, put that through my cuddle bug and embossed it with uh, an embossing folder that I had in my stash just to add a little bit more texture to the layout. I didn't want just a plain old sheet of red cardstock um, up there in the corner so to give it a bit more texture I threw it through, put it through, that sounds so funny, put it through my uh, 
Cuddlebug. I found a stamp from deep within my stash as well that I decided to add to this layout. I thought it worked perfectly because it is about a very dear friend of mine and the BFF stamp was perfect to add in that little bit of white space just before, just below the title. I also wanted to include the word sister in my layout um, because I have a friend. This The girl that I'm scrapbooking right now, my friend, is a lot closer than just a friend. She's like a sister to me. So I wanted to incorporate that somehow into my layout. And so I pulled out an alpha stamp that I had and created the word sister using it and then stamped it with Versamark ink onto black cardstock and heat embossed it with white powder. I really love the contrast between the dark paper and the white and I really really love, I haven't tried it yet, doing the same thing on craft cardstock. That's on my crafty bucket list. One of these days I will get it done. Once I've got that done I trim it down so that it becomes a little strip and it adhere it to the bottom of the photo. It'll be near my journaling. I'll be adding that closer to the end of this video. It's usually the last thing I add to my layouts anyways. Um, and before I do that, I'm just going to finish embellishing. I'm using the negative portion of the hearts that you see in the top left corner of the picture to adhere to the bottom right of the layout. I love using that. There was no wastage of paper or products on this layout. I should mention too that I totally dumpster dived to create this layout. Everything on it is from either scrap paper or has been in my stash for quite a while. If you come visit my Facebook page, you will see that there is often hashtags that has different things, but one of the ones that I use frequently is stash buster. Uh, hashtag stash buster and I share that on the page when I've created something that has used quite a bit of my stash or anything out of my stash or scraps that needs to be used up. So I'm just adding a little bit more sewing thread. It's going to go underneath the embossed sister strip that I made and then below that the journaling will be added as well. I'm pretty well near the end of creating this layout. All I really have left to do is add the journaling, add the date, because the date is so important in my scrapbooking, especially as a chronological scrapbooker. I just need to know what the date is and then add it. And once that's done, it's pretty well done. Next, I'm going to take off the washi tape because, like I said, I am pretty well done this layout. You're going to notice uh, as I'm tearing it off that in the top left-hand corner, some of the pattern paper comes up with the washi tape, which was kind of a bummer, but it just roll with it. What can you do, right? So if I really wanted, I could probably distress the paper just a little bit more to help it fit in just a little bit because you know sometimes mistakes end up being happy accidents and they work out really well. I just left it, decided to run with it and keep on going. So I'm just going to add my journaling. I'll use my date stamp to add the date and then I am finished. Finito. I went out on a limb this time too and actually added my journaling without tracing lines on it first with a straight edge ruler and my pencil that's totally living on the edge for me i usually always put pencil lines on my layout first and then go back and do my journaling because i like it being straight and i'm just anal that way but this time i was like you know what throw caution to the wind i'm just gonna add the journaling i'll rough hand uh add lines afterwards to underline it sort of thing and just kind of live on the wild side this time and I've done it a few times since and actually really quite like it it's quite freeing <laughs> so it's always nice to change things up and do something different 
So here I'm just adding the date, doing the second and third generation stamping as well. I just love the look and it, in my opinion, helps complete the layout. And with that, my friends, this layout is completed. Or maybe not. What am I doing here? I'm just adding, oh right! So if you saw me earlier in the video, kind of brushing my desk off, I was actually looking for the little dot that belongs over my letter I in friend, but I couldn't find it. So instead I pulled out a stamp that I knew had a little tiny heart in it, and I added that for the I dot instead. <laughs> and I decided to add that in red because I needed just a little bit more red in the title. There you have it, my friends. This layout is complete. Thank you so much for joining me. Obviously, I've got a few uh, close-ups here to show you, and I hope you join me again soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.